Hey folks, it's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ Stocks, crypto assets, news, and interviews. Today is Saturday. Hope you're having a great weekend. It's November 18th. And in this video, we're going to do another edition of Rapid Fire News Updates for the period November 11th to November 17th. And again, just as a reminder, this isn't to go into deep dive details. It's just a high level overview of what I think is the most pertinent information that happened over the last week or so. And uh, spoiler alert, there was a lot of news that happened, so I'm going to try to keep this around 10 to 15 minutes, but it may go a little bit longer than normal. Before we get to that, though, make sure to smash the like. It helps support me in the channel. It doesn't cost you anything, and if you're new, you can subscribe, tick the bell, all that good stuff. You'll be notified on any future rapid-fire news updates or whenever I go live or whenever I post a new video. Also, make sure to give us a follow on X, which is previously Twitter. The handle for that is at GroupPow. going to be using that as my platform of choice going forward. So reported by High Times, Ohio Governor DeWine hatches plan to whittle down adult use law that the voters approved. And there's some more information that goes with this a little bit later on in the video, but Ohio's legal pot law issue two could be whittled down by lawmakers since it's citizen initiative. So uh, basically there's all hands on deck to get that amended, but uh, they're running out of time to do so. So again, there's more information on that later on in this video. Also, SNDL reported third quarter 2023 financial and operational results and achieved positive net cash from operating activities and free cash flow, a company that I think is going to make it long term. I'm a shareholder, full disclosure, and I already did a video on that. You can check that out for more specific details. But they did announce that they're going to be renewing the buyback program for up to 100 million Canadian in shares, which I go over that in that video as well. I also did a video on Oxley's Q3 2023 financial results, so I won't dive into this in detail, but uh, impressive quarter overall. And we're starting to see uh, the right sizing of this company as well, turning the ship around and retained number five LP licensed producer in Canada with 4.8 market share. So again, I think this company is going to be well worth the risk and could be a massive turnaround story. So again, check out that video if you want to see more on that. Also, Michigan MJ tax revenue grew by 49% over the past year, surpassing that of alcohol earnings, which as we know, this is medicine of the future and alcohol is poison. Cannabis Q3 uh, revenue and quarter was flat sequentially. So again, not going to go into entire details of this, but I'll try to be doing a little bit more videos and covering a little bit more of the earnings as well. Uh, It's just been super busy over the last couple of weeks. Uh, Speaking of earnings, Body and Mind also reported revenue dip in 2023, but CEO is optimistic about the future. So it's a profitable small uh, MSO, so multi-state operator in the US, and uh, I hold it in my portfolio as well. Uh, But again, like I said, going to be trying to do a lot more videos on a lot of these companies' earnings and tracking their earnings a lot more uh, as we look to the new bull market starting and also with rescheduling and removal of potential removal of 280E, uh, we're going to see a ton of capital remaining, you know, improvements to the bottom line essentially, and uh, we're going to see tons of, you know, high cash flowing businesses in this industry. Also, Japan prepares for medical cannabinoid law similar to Korea's, so we're starting to see more and more countries adopt it, and there's some information here with regards to Thailand here in just a moment as well. But New York lawmakers also send MJ tax cut bills to governor, providing local 280E relief for NYC businesses. I think New Jersey was one of the first ones to kind of circumvent this, but we're seeing a lot of um, individual state laws that are trying to circumvent and get around the 280E tax code and provide relief for that. So again, this is just more evidence that we're more than likely going to see rescheduling to at least schedule three and the removal of 280E. And uh, I think the prospect of that happening has never been better, right? Also, the New York governor signed the MJ tax cut bill providing local 280E relief for NYC businesses. So this was just 11 years ago. Uh, Sorry, (laughs) I wish. 11 hours ago, uh, like I said, they sent, lawmakers sent it to the governor and 11 hours ago, they reported that the governor signed it. So that's great to see more and more states and hopefully we can get rescheduling to schedule three and that'll remove it for all companies in the US, right? Ohio governor also says voters shouldn't expect surprises as he works with GOP uh, leadership to amend the MJ legalization law. So again, They're saying all hands on deck to change the voter approved MJ law before legalization takes effect next month. We'll see. Let me know in the comments below if you think there's going to be any massive, uh, drastic, you know, amendments to this. But uh, obviously people have spoken. And if Ohio can get it done with a Republican uh, 
uh, dominated state, uh, then we should see the rest of the nation follow suit and Ohio became the 24th state to legalize adult use sales. And we could see adult use on the ballot for Florida in 2024 as well, which would be, an, in my opinion, the biggest market in the US. So this is great to see game theory playing out more and more. But uh, I think this is still going to go through. But you know, we'll see what sort of amendments and changes they're able to uh, to squeeze out here. But like I said, t- talk is uh, clock is ticking and time is winding down here. Also, Forefront Ventures announced revised third quarter 2023 results and conference call. So there was some rescheduling to the release of its third quarter 2023 results and conference call due to delays in the company's audit. So the company will host a conference call to discuss the results and provide an update on the current business trends on the revised date of November 20th, 2023 and 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Also, Metapharm Labs reported third quarter results. So it looks like uh, revenue of just over... 8.5 8.5 million and then adjusted EBITDA was negative 2.4 million but there was a note here I settled a long-term customer dispute and I mentioned this in one of my previous uh, previous prior videos settled a long-standing customer dispute for a total consideration of 9 million including net cash of 7.3 million collected in October 1 million in Tilray brands uh, MJ products and a full year agreement where Tilray will purchase half a million of Metafarm products. So that was a dispute that was settled. And uh, I covered that in one of my previous videos, but uh, yeah, that's, a, that's the update on that. Also, Wild introduces new boysenberry sleep gummies, and this is a brand under uh, BZAM. And I've done a, a video on this as well. So you can check out uh, that product review video on the Wild Edibles. Also, CV Sciences, Inc. reported third quarter 2023 financial results, so increased revenue of 4.1 million for the third quarter 2023 compared to 3.8 million, so a slight uptick there. Uh, But again, you can check out that uh, full report if you'd like to learn more. Also, there was a big spike on VFF stock. A lot of people were asking me on, you know, what happened there. It was mostly technical in my opinion, but they did get, this is published on November 14th, VFF stock keeps buy at Beacon after best quarter in two years. So I think that was uh, some of the reason why we saw it spike up there but again we just had a lack of resistance on the daily time frame and we pulled back quite a bit after the hhs recommendation to schedule three and uh it was just lack of resistance in my opinion but this also added uh, to that momentum that we saw also acreage reported third quarter 2023 financial results which we know canopy is set to acquire acreage once federally permissible but consolidated revenue of 56.5 million, a decrease of 2.8% compared to the quarter ended June 30th, 2023. Gross margin was 38%, which is a little bit lower than what we would want to see for an industry average. You, you generally want to see between that 40, 50, anything over 50 is great. Uh, net loss for Q3 2023 was 7.9 million, so not a bad loss there. And adjusted EBITDA was 6.6 million, and adjusted EBITDA as a percentage of consolidation revenue was 12%. And uh, they should benefit greatly as well from the Ohio market. Also, Schwaz announces third quarter 2023 financial results. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this name. Uh, I think they should change it. Uh, I'm not a fan. <laughs> Q3 revenue of 46.7 million, income from operations of 8.9 million, adjusted EBITDA of 14.1 million or 30% of revenue. And they also generated 6.9 million of operating cash flow. Moving along here, Neptune also reported fiscal second quarter 2024 financial results. They had net revenue of 8.7 million down from 12 million for the same period last year, largely due to a decrease in food and beverage revenues compared to the same period last year. Petition calls for Canadian regulators to allow more potent edibles. So they're looking to increase it to 100 milligrams, which would basically be in line with all of the legal states in the US. Uh, I've gone to Colorado, I did a video on that as well, uh, reviewing the WANA gummies and yeah, they can you can buy 100 milligrams per package and uh, it's now been over five years. so time time to change this in my opinion and I did a video on this as well with my thoughts and opinions and uh, you can check that out but let me know in the comments section below your thoughts on that also Tilray Brands expands MJ Beverage portfolio with new THC CBG and CBD drink innovations by top performing Canadian brands so they added the XMG tropical cream float is amazing I did a product review on that you can check that out Citrus Peaks uh, Citrus Peaks as well Paradise Street and Lemon Iced Tea I did all of those and then the Molo, they added the Orchard Chiller, which is a type of um, apple cider inspired brew. So I did a video review of that and on the Molos as well. But the new Molo Lime and the Molo 10, amazing. 
and the uh, the Orchard Chiller, really good as well. But you got to try this XMG Plus Tropical Cream Float. <laughs> it is amazing. It literally tastes like candy, candy and it's got guana, guarana extract in it and CBG. 10 milligrams of that and uh, 10, 10 milligrams THC as well. But that is by far my favorite. And it's pretty cheap. It's only like, uh, I think, six bucks, between five and six bucks here in Alberta and Edmonton, and only 5% sales tax. Uh, but that is by far the best drink going right now. Uh, guilty pleasure for sure. Moving on though, Crafted for the People, Sweet Waters, uh, which is a subsidiary, subsidiary of Tilray Brands, they introduced a new half a gummy IPA to meet consumer demand for fruity, easy drinking beers. So if you've tried that, let me know what your thoughts are on that. Also, Rubicon Organics reported third quarter 2023 financial results. They had net revenue of 10 million and 30.1 million for the three and nine month ended September 30th, 2023. They had adjusted EBITDA of 1.1 million, achieved operating cash flow of 1.4 million, 5.6% national market share of premium flour and pre-rolls, 5.1% national market share of premium edibles, and Wildflower is the number one topical brand in Canada with market share of 26%. Wow, crazy. Moving on, Cresco Labs also reported Q3 revenue decline less than expected. So the revenue for the quarter, for third quarter, was $191 million with retail growth and strong performance in core markets, helping offset purposeful attrition from divested assets. And we know that they called off the, uh, the merger there with uh, Columbia Care, now the Cannabis Co., and uh, yeah, we'll we'll see here. the The stock has been seeing some uh, some momentum to the upside, and some some bids coming in there, some nice bid support. So uh, I think I, this is a company I hold as well, long term, and uh, I hold it in my portfolio. I think long term it's going to be uh, another one of the you know the long term winners in the top ten globally. So this is what I was referencing earlier. Thailand leaders scramble to backpedal law as six thousand pot shops open. So as pro Promise Prime Minister Stretha Thavison plans to scale back Thailand's rapidly growing industry. So again, game theory playing out. But thousands of MJ shops opened, and this is just a testament to the pent-up demand, right? Opened across Thailand after the nation became the first in Asia to decriminalize MJ, and there are no signs of slowdown as opposition to the industry grows, led by the country's new Prime Minister. So uh, crazy. Can't wait to go visit Thailand. I've never been, and it's been on my bucket list for sure, and now even more so. Also, the SEC raised red flag over part of Canopy's plan to enter the US MJ market. So essentially, TLDR, long story short, this is just on hold at the moment as they try to get around some of these um, issues and, and concerns raised by the SEC. And there's a lot of, at play here, right? It's Canopy, the parent company, and then their holdings company, Canopy USA. This is a novel structure. It hasn't been done before. The SEC, the regulator in the US is uh, you know, part of it, and then the NASDAQ exchange as well. So there's a lot of moving parts here. I did a video on that, though. You can check that out. And then I also mentioned that BioSteel in that same video obtained court approval of successful bids in the sale and investment solicitation process for uh, their BioSteel Canada and BioSteel Manufacturing. So again, did an entire video on that. Also, Air Wellness, Q3 revenue falls short of projections. So this has been a common trend right now in the US, but revenue was up 5% year over year to 114.4 million, excluding discontinued operations. Gap loss from operations approved 92% year over year to negative 1.5 million, excluding discontinued operations, and generated over 20 million of operating cash flow in the third quarter, adjusted EBITDA up 52% year over year to 28.4 million, and adjusted EBITDA margin up 25%. So I might do a video on this one as well. This is another one that I'm going to be following closely in the future, especially with, uh, you know, Florida on the ballot for 2024 potentially and could legalize adult use in the next year or two, in my opinion. Also, another impressive report here, Decibel, Decibel announces third quarter results with 30.2 million of net revenue, 6.7 million of adjusted EBITDA and positive free cash flow. And check this out, national market share of 7.5% in Q3 2023, which placed Decibel uh, as the second largest licensed producer in Canada by market share. Wow, kudos to them. That's uh, no easy feat and they did it in a record time as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna be covering this one in uh, in my videos a lot more. Uh, but let me know in the comments below what you thought of that. What do you think of this company? What you thought of that report? Uh, but I think overall very, very impress impressive and uh, one of the uh, companies that are kind of flying under the radar at the moment and something that we should 
that, that people should definitely uh, keep in the back of their minds. Also, rescheduling could foster MJ acceptance from healthcare industry. Absolutely. This is a monumental step, and I would argue probably the biggest thing for the MJ industry to date. So moving MJ from Schedule 1 to Schedule 3 under the Controlled Substances Act could influence whether how, whether and how doctors recommend MJ, uh, medical MJ. And we know that there's bipartisan bill going through Congress right now, uh, spearheaded by Nancy Mace. And they're looking to actually deschedule it and remove it from the Controlled Substances Act. But I hear there's some issues with regards to treaty, uh, treaties and things like that. So they would have to do some amendments to get that done. Um, but ultimately, I think that's where we're heading. I think the most likely scenario, I did a poll on X as well. Uh, the majority, I think uh, about 75% of people figured that we would get res rescheduling before descheduling. And most people thought it would be Schedule 3 and then we get descheduling, right? That's ultimately where we will be heading, in my opinion, as we look to get treated the same as alcohol as at the end of the day, right? Also, South African lawmakers approve MJ legalization bill years after court deems prohibition, prohibition unconstitutional. So again, game theory just continues to play out. And uh, wow, what a lot of what a lot of uh, news and updates that came just over the last week. Kind of paint a picture of how much updates really goes on in the MJ industry. And this isn't even everything. This is only like 50% or like 40%, maybe even less. I had to kind of cherry pick. And like I said, I kind of just try to keep these around 10 to 15 minutes long and uh, go over the most important articles and a high level overview in case anybody missed it. And then you can go dig deeper if you'd like to on your own time. But already over that 15 minute mark, so I'm going to wrap it up. But SNDL and Nova MJ remain committed to their partnership following the termination of the implementation agreement. Uh, and Value Buds, obviously a huge... Um, a huge chain and uh, really starting to uh, you know gain traction its growth is substantial uh, but it does have a competitor on its hands and that is Cana Cabana which is a subsidiary of High Tide uh, which is another company that I own and very bullish on that company long term uh, I pretty much only shop at Cana Cabana to be honest with you um, so I I would say 80% of my purchases are at Canna Cabana, and then the rest is at Value Buds. Uh, but let me know in the comments section below where do you normally shop and which MJ retailer gets the majority of your money. All right, going to end it there. Hopefully, hopefully everybody enjoyed this update. Like I said, there's a lot going on, and uh, it might start to calm down over the next week or two. But I'm expecting a massive end-of-year rally after tax loss harvesting and selling uh, into the end of the year. Uh, I think that... Uh, into 2024 and you know the first quarter and beyond uh, i think 2024 is going to be a massive turnaround year for the mj industry and uh, we should see with an election year coming up rescheduling uh, florida potentially on the ballot for 2024 there's so many catalysts on the horizon the mj act up for reveal here in canada they're looking to change edibles increase the limits there so you can see a lot is changing and there's a lot of moving parts at the moment and i think it's going to be a massive year for mj ahead but going to end it there, it's Rod with Pod Group. Thanks again for joining us in the pursuit of wealth. Like the video if you enjoyed it today. Share it with your network and enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll see you on the next video.